Game one draft here, Samsung on the blue side, KT taking over on the red side. Now Ezreal, the first champion removed. And intriguing that the previous series is probably the first one we've had since Runeglaive Ezreal became a real consideration where not picked or banned anywhere in the whole series. Wow. So not only the Ezreal, but the Thresh as well, the pocket ban up against Pikachu. We've seen, I mean, when the first game against Jadair, he level one ganked onto Kuzan in the mid lane. Won the game. Won the game, right off of that level one gank, basically, because KT, when you give them that little lead in the early game, Pikachu and Score have developed into this fearsome synergy where they just get into your jungle. And there's the Kog'Maw, I think this is a very smart ban. SKT used the Kog'Maw bans to come back from an 0-1 deficit against KT Rolster. This is our world. We've been in a Kog'Maw first pick world. Now it's a Brom first pick world, given its flexibility, both on the offense and the defense. A lot of interesting pocket bans being banned through. I feel like Twisted Fate and Kog'Maw will loom as more regular bans as we come into the playoff stages. Still no information on which way these comps want to go. Is there strong engage options? For example, Annie, Irma ban last series, available here if anyone wants to take it. They certainly have that option. Score, I feel we were talking about this a little bit before the broadcast. His Rek'Sai and his Echo, I think stronger champions for him than the Gragas. Uh, we could see where, which direction Eve wants to go here if he's going to try and get that Nidalee in the end. And that Braum, interesting, considering uh, that that would be a first pick when we consider that Ezreal is actually banned here, which is a big reason behind a lot of the Braum priority. I feel like it definitely came into this scene because it was that hard counter to the Ezreal, but now with the small buffs and just what we're seeing, how flexible the pick is, despite being a melee ranged uh, laner, still gets the laning phase just fine after the Q buffs and just has so much flexibility to really impact fights. So not surprised to see it really skip ahead in priority, even with AP Ezreal fast looming as a thing of the past. Yeah, and as we take a look at the opposite support pick, uh, Janna for Pickaboo. Uh, a lot of Pickaboo's strength is in his, uh, his early aggression, and that's going to, you know, take a little bit of the edge off of his bite. What are you saying? Just <laughs> skill E at level one, there's big auto attack damage. Yeah, <laughs> there's no CC effects, so probably not going to see a repeat of what really threw Jin off in that series last week. Eve locks in the Nidalee. Okay, we're sticking with what's worked here, Samsung. Yeah, maybe thinking about the Sivir, a champion we've seen banned a lot actually against Fury, and a good takeaway. So where does Arrow go now? Uh, usually, when we talk about Arrow's success, we'd, we'd be seeing a Vayne here, perhaps, but that's not really ideal against what's going into this composition at the moment. Nagme has a chance to take that Azir away from Crown. I think you have to take that right now. It could be the Draven, you know? He didn't have the most success on it last time. Of course, he was just one cash in away from really taking over that game. I believe he had 600 plus stacks at one point, so it would have been a massive cash in, but just couldn't pull it off. It's still a wonderful laning matchup, but this was Crystal from Snake. Definitely will be locking in at this point, but I know what you mean, because the thing about Arrow, eight and four uh, Siva, six and one Cogmoid. We're talking about 12 and seven games. That's 19 games where he has an above 10 KDA, 10.8 on Siva, 16K on Cogmoid. The rest of the champions kind of fall away. So there's no real guarantee as to where he goes with the picks. He's considering the jinx. Oh no. Uh oh, this is not what you want to see. No, it definitely is not. A lot of hovers, and it will be the Corky lock-in. And this is, I mean, Arrow's Corky. This is, whether we were talking about getting caught or no damage potential, we've seen multiple games where Bloodthirster, Trinity Force, Corky was just tickling enemy tanks. Or just balking into three members of the enemy team. Mm -hmm. His team fight positioning that is his strength with some other champions doesn't have that same effect. So big poke comp actually locked in. Crown wants the... Varus matchup into Azir. That is a hard matchup for Varus. And now, I mean, it's the most obvious Maokai pickup ever, but maybe someday has been sipping the same water <laughs> as Duke. Because look, backline pressure is what you want to pick up with the picks and bands. You can go for Maokai, the safe choice, or you can throw in the Olaf and just try and smash Varus. Because let me tell you, Varus can do nothing against Olaf. No, the chain of corruption going to fall rather flat in that case. And Duke was saying in the MVP interview that he likes the Olaf matchup into Rumble. He is a fan of this. And with that damage over time, I mean, maybe you can see that working out. If you get an early Hex Drinker, uh, as Olaf gets lower and lower and lower, you can actually make some sort of play right there as your kind of attack speed ramps up. But Maokai, the safer choice and more reliable choice to be sure. And look, it's targeted engage onto the very squishy Varus in the back line. So look, 
Not going to take the risk. I kind of guessed when he didn't change to Ghost as his summoner spell that was probably going to be the Malka. <laughs> Saddest of days, I know. Look, Olaf versus Rumble, definitely something you can navigate. First five levels may be difficult, but the one gank really pushed him over the top. And when Olaf gets going with a lane, you know, in a long lane like top, you can run people down and kill them. But sadly, no Olaf here. No Olaf here, and kind of an awkward composition, actually, from Samsung. Uh, a lot of damage, very little frontline threat. Luna really going to have to do a lot of work on this Braum to keep KT off of them. And if the turrets ever go down, Monte Cristo, the flanks from the likes of Malk are going to be super potent because it's not just Crown, who, of course, you're going to be going for as target number one, but even the Nidalee knocking her down. Either of these poke members have very squishy base sets. Maybe Eve will actually go for the Rod of Ages that we saw Chaser pick up because the back line is a lot of threat from the likes of Someday and Score. Yep. <clears throat> very dangerous indeed. And even Nagne, if he can get behind that True. Varus, it's game over pretty much for the Varus pick. And there's a lot of uh, poke here, but not a lot of late game damage. That is for sure. So Samsung, they've got a group early. And, you know, Sivir's just not the best champion to have with a, with an Italy and a Varus. Sure, you'll get a little bit more speed for kiting, but you're going to lack that reliable long range auto attack or rocket like Corky has to continue to put down damage. Well, let's get into game one. Optimism in the voice for both the cheer squads. Samsung maybe a bit full on, but look, it's a difficult team come to put off. Now, in the perfect world, Siva slams down the way. Suddenly, the poke is just insane. As they're hoping for another Penta. If he gets three Penta kills in a season, we're going to have to really re try <laughs> just reevaluating metrics because it's been an insane season of Penta kills. Yeah, and six so far, three from KT Rolster. Nagne with one on Azir. Yeah. Arrow with two on to Siva. No Siva this game. Corky versus Siva. We've talked about this matchup at length because it's basically the default 2v2 matchup. Corky, at least when he hits level 6, has the rockets to maybe try and force out a spell shield, but so easy to spell shield the Phosphorus Bomb and win those trades early. Yeah, that's sign. Uh, fans of Cloud Templars from America, actually. So The name of Cloud Templar <laughs> spreads far and wide. <laughs> there was no Ramus on the sign, so I didn't know the joke. Yeah, and... Well, I, I'm very curious because Varus just hasn't been a big pick here in Korea as of late. Certainly earlier in this season, we saw a little bit of it, but nowhere near to the degree that it's still used in regions like Europe, and especially with uh, an Azir who can win a lot of these poke trades early. And Crown felt confident enough to not pick up the cleanse. You look down the lineup, you really want to be cleansing the Maokai. You might say, okay, I mean, Nongleng could kind of gone for the same decision. Remember, the only hard CC is Crown, and maybe if Luna gets a couple of the concussive blows on, but Nongleng goes for the cleanse, and that might actually shape to be very important, because cleansing off the Chains of Corruption, suddenly a Zeosek play, very possible. Okay, well, let's see how well he can use that cleanse in this game. Crown just falling back very early on. We do have a lane swap that will result in oh. a 2v2 in the uh. top side. Arrow doing arrow corky things and just getting nailed early by this concussive blow mm. from Luna. Pretty poor trade there for KT. Just walked up, took the stun, took the damage. Look, it's not quite as bad as Prey, who of course got forced out of lane in the last series, but definitely have to pop that potion early. No sustain available. A lot of lane control available to Fury and Luna. Yeah, and Fury, Fury is that very lane dominant AD carry. He is like OQ. He gets leads in the laning phase. And sometimes Samsung can ride those leads into a victory. And also, Pickaboo, who likes to roam early, not going to have so much freedom now that there is the all in potential onto Arrow. So we'll see how that uh, sorts out in the top side. KT, a team that puts so many resources into Someday. I don't really understand the draft coming through from KT, because remember, this is a first rotation, Jana, as the answer to the Brom pick. So, okay, disengage for disengage. So far, you've got me, KT, but how do we end up with this Corky-Jana duo? 
it's, it's, it's a bit strange to me that we've kind of gone this way because Pickaboo now is kind of forced to stay in lane with a very safe AD carry. It just doesn't feel like specifically the AD carry pick fits what they were going for. Well, I mean, what are your options here? If Draven. You're, okay, you, you want to go for the Janna Draven, just maximum crazy trading combo? At least you try and hold down Fury. You cannot win laning phase against Janna Draven. If you're a Sivir, it's basically impossible. We see it maybe from time to time. There's so much jungle attention is sent to the top lane, but... Yeah, but KT has lost every single Draven game they've played this year, Papa Smithy. I mean, their Corky games aren't much better, Monte Cristo. <laughs> Fair point. I cannot argue with that. All right, here comes the gang. Eve wants to come oh. in early, and Arrow is oh. having trouble. They have to use that exhaust early. Nice use of the Valkyrie to deny the pounce from Eve. Good timing. Pickaboo takes another spear, though, and that is just yet more damage onto the KT lineup. They're trying to target Crown in response. So Eve is forced out of the jungle. So could have taken a camp, but he's going go. for the aggressive gang. Chilling smite, flash knockup. Crown has to flash in return, but there's not enough damage to kill him. No mana on Dodogne to really follow that up. So flash for flash and heal. Nice trade from KT. Yeah, he used both his summoners there. So, I mean, swapping your jungler's flash for the mid lane, already a big advantage. And suddenly, Nagne, this is his pen to killing champion. It is the Azir. He should have an even easier laning phase in what was always shaping to be pretty straightforward as Azir kind of runs Varus over in lane. Yeah, and this is what I don't like about mid lane Varus Papa Smithy, especially when we consider a champion like Jace instead, who just has more escapes, has a knockback, uh, is a little bit more self-sustaining. Certainly, Varus is strong, but when you target him heavily pre-6 and you're, uh-oh, score coming down for a gank at the bottom side. Kube is very far pushed forward, but Eve is also here. Kube very low. Kube not going to live through this one as, oh, Arcane oh. Smash just out of reach, actually, but Eve has to pull the flash, too. And oh. close. Someday, choosing not to flash could have had that kill. Eve made a big miss, so it came in level three to level four. Of course, we already seen it. Nidalee chunked out on top, missed the spear. Now, that was a very easy spear to be missed the spear, but then was very smart in terms of team fighting to just present himself as a very squishy, very tasty Nidalee, drew the attention, still had flash available, and finally got Cuvee through. So, okay, probably should have done that with damage threat, but in the end, does keep his top laner alive. Yeah, it does, but someday also I feel misplaying that sure. right there. Uh, thought his Q was going to be in range when it in fact was not. So they do miss out on that kill. And that means that Samsung still has control over this top side, although Arrow not farming badly considering everything that's happened. And KT now with some nice summoner spell advantages in the side lanes. At least now you can say someday has the flash up again. It makes it even more dangerous for Kube to try and match his farm. Score has some choices about where he can go in terms of his solo lane ganking. And Eve is going to have to play a very reactionary game around the solo lanes. Whereas, uh, basically, now that Arrow's getting close to six, he's going to have an easier time in the duo lane. And he has his summoners back up now. So uh, this is a, actually ended up being a pretty good situation for KT Rolster. Eve doesn't really have the safe lanes to gank. As you mentioned, Cuve really struggling in this lane. Maokai often runs over the rumble. 20 CS is the advantage, and with no flash, it's going to be difficult to reset what has been a deep freeze by someday. Most of the lane phase scores coming again, but can't get on top of Crown. Yeah, Crown with the ult now, too, so that is a bit of a harder gank to make, as you can just stop somebody in their track with the chain of corruption. and. That really stuffs any dives, too, because as it spreads out, if you hit it, there's really not a lot of follow-up you can do in a skirmish. With the cleanse from Nagne, I mean, whenever you think of Nidalee jungle, you're like, okay, I want CC in the lanes. Maokai Nidalee is probably the best synergy between your targeted and engage, and of course, the very high damage ganks that Nidalee is able to put out. But cleanse is going to be the case in the mid lane. In the bottom, maybe you can hope for the concussive blows, but it almost got uh, Eve killed in the top lane in the first gank. Not the best lanes to gank, so probably just going to have to be happy farm time for Eve. And if Rek'Sai and KT get lane pressure, very low base stats means you could potentially try and get in the face of Eve, as has been Score's way in recent series. Absolutely. Uh, and if Score can get into the enemy jungle, like you're saying, maybe he can at least contain the Evelyn somewhat, but he, uh, he's been a bit reluctant. And I, so far. And I guess my point is that the catch-up mechanic's not there for Samsung. If the gangs come over, great, they'll get map control. But if they ever lose map control, 
very hard for them to actually try and get the wards or push any vision out because their lanes certainly not in helpful spots. And with the summoner spells, contesting anywhere around the map right now isn't really an option for Samsung. And we, when we talk about the lead too, if they fail to get it and they start losing towers, Valkai is a strong teleport champion, but not only that, but Someday is really good at Valkai teleport flanks. That is one of his strengths, it always has been. We think back to some of Someday's all-time great games, like the Summer Finals last year against Samsung Blue, and that was a major reason behind their victory. Here we go again. Still no flash up though, so Crown able to walk away, score. Look, he's not really sacrificing any resources. Okay, he's three CS behind Italy, but not really a big factor, but just the repeated ganks come around mid. If he can blow the flash again, it'll be a significant factor because honestly Varus has actually done very well. Crown had that flash burn early. Score has made multiple visits, but very competitive in CS. Yeah, and Nogne has been not willing to use his flash either. You can think that maybe because of up until now, Crown's flash was down. Maybe he could have gotten a flash. Uh, Emperor's divide play in to finalize a gank, but KT playing a very risk averse game early and they're running out of their time now to play around the flash timer of Kuve in the bottom lane. In general the timers were created by Masterful Pathing but it's capitalizing on that whether that's in terms of sending multiple people to pick up a turret when you know the enemy top lane is flashes down or contesting for a dragon when you know you have a big summoner advantage. If you just blow those summoners and then can't make anything out of it then it's kind of a moot point especially when Samsung on the whole is competitive in CS is Chain of Corruption instantly cleansed. Okay, suddenly a window for Samsung to play around. Yeah, and they had to cleanse that too because right now all the vision around the mid lane is in favor of Samsung. So there could have been an Evol or an Italy rather waiting there with a spear coming from the river. So he didn't have a choice. Had to use the summoner immediately. Samsung have been very fast at getting pink wards onto the map. They have good vision zones. This is again the good Samsung that really started to shine through this season. Katie. Look, they're not in any bad position. In fact, they're ahead in gold, but for all their early game play, the last five minutes have really been muted from what has been a previously rampaging KT. Yes, absolutely, but the, the advantage is still there. The CS differential has grown significantly in the bottom side of the map right now, as we see 35, the current number. So Kuve still struggling, and a lot of that was the fact that his summoner spell was blown early. Maybe there wasn't a follow-up gank, but oh, nice actual job on the tornado there from Pickaboo. And just like the Alistair matchup, if you're really on point, you can do great things in the disengage from Janna. But it has kept Pickaboo in lane, and not necessarily with a hyperscaling AD carry. Corky Janna just sitting next to each other. I mean, it's wonderful to have PL as an AD carry, but of course you have the longest range gap closer or escape uh, for Corky and the Valkyrie, the 800 range escape. So. Doesn't really sound like it really commands a Janna when it comes to Peel. Maybe the Azir will be the one that needs that in the late game, but keeping Pickaboo stuck in the lane, just picking up experience, you know, getting uh, ancient coin stacks, that's a mini win for Sansa. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll see how fast he can get the talisman off of it because that ability to disengage could prove highly crucial depending on the timing and the team fights. Score just scrapping a little bit with Luna and Eve in the enemy jungle. Got a host of wards down into bottom, so they have some pretty good dragon control right now. And this is where KT can really start to threaten that dragon because Nagne is pushing forward. He is winning the pressure battle in the mid lane. And here we go, score there. Luna has to play cautiously. They do get the pink ward, but it comes at a small price. A very small price. Finally, Fury and Arrow caught. Arrow going very aggressive. This is the Valkyrie we talked about. Wow, he actually just goes ahead and takes that fight. He has the Sheen already. So confident that he would be able to win the burst battle, especially since the last buy from Fury was, in fact, an Avarice Blade. So now that he's six, uh, forces the ult out of Fury. That is nice not to have in that bottom lane. Does limit the potential of an all-in. Pickaboo taking some chunks right there. Some kind of awkward tornado usage. It's right. honestly quite rare for AD carries to understand, hey, the enemy's just spent 800 gold on delayed power. He has the Sheen Phage, which is definitely by far the go time when it comes to Trinity Force carries in terms of their lane presence, and actually going in aggressive and winning and trade. Judging power as an AD carry is deceptively massive, and it's just good to see. Yeah, turned out to be very nicely played from Arrow. That's, that is an encouraging sign on this Corky. Papa Smithy. 
Oh, it's just good to see him developing. Hopefully we'll see the late game damage because I remember a couple of games where just really was tickling the enemy on the Corky. So look, had some time away from the pick, been exclusively playing the Cogmore recently, and maybe best foot forward this time out. <laughs> it couldn't get much worse. Yeah, Arrow is such an interesting player to me because it's not that he's even bad on, on caster carries. He's good on Cog Money, and he's great on Ezreal. It's just for some reason his Corky has never been up to competitive par, in spite of the similarities between uh, it and many other Trinity Force carries. It's just some players that, you know, you, you think you've pigeonholed their play style. Samsung made a really nice rotation. We haven't seen the heal onto Crown for the attack speed, but that's a lot of out of turret damage. Yeah, it is indeed, but are they going to pay for it? Someday is here. He already TP'd in. Bye -bye. Eve. And Crown is dead to rights, and they're going to get that turnaround. First blood for Nagme. That's going to be a Dragon 2. Now, Samsung likes to do this. They like to put Eve in lane and have him auto-attack turrets. But sometimes you are going to pay for that. Very proactive teleport from Someday. He waited very patiently for his laners before showing himself. Very nicely done. And they're going to get a Dragon and... Uh, about half of the turret HP down after the Trailblazer clears out the wave. It's looking to see the turret health in top lane. It's fallen low, but no, it's not going to be taken down as far as we can see. So not even able to answer with immediate goal. That is very nice chip damage onto both mid and top. So maybe if they make some smart rotation in the next six minutes, they can open up uh, a bit of a goalie. They're only 400 gold behind, of course, a lot of standing gold on those outer turrets. But immediate power and that st dr dragon stack over to Naja. Oh, to KT, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm so impressed by Someday's teleporting skill, too. If we just look at how long he held that, he was just standing in the fog of war, waiting for everyone else to catch up, waiting for Nagne to get back to lane. So not trying to pull the trigger early and make sure that they can put him in a situation where they could possibly escape, and instead punishing the overcommitment to that mid lane tower. The item timing for QV is early, but it's not ideal. You know, you finish the Andrew, say, okay, I want to take a fight. I've got teleport up, but of course, Dragon's just gone down. And now, if he wants to finish off this turret, it's going to be very overextended without boots. It's probably not going to be punished, but it could be a very different game if they were able to delay that Dragon. They just got a bit too cute trying to do turret damage. Crown kept his summoners up, so that's still at least a small consolation, but nice little early uh, capitalization by specifically Someday. And if I'm Samsung right now, if I really want to take advantage of this as Arrow has to Valk away, Peekaboo not there to back him up, uh, I really start thinking about taking some pink wards, advancing them into the topside river. Because what you want to do is have Kube push forward, then walk into the mid lane, lay down the equalizer, and have him try and gank the mid lane. A very cute pink ward just towards the mid lane turret, so maybe you're being prophetic with those words. Score's actually rotating around top. We might see some action around there. Yeah, this is uh, coming in. So Someday already with a lockdown. Kube pops the equalizer. There goes the flash. Flash for Someday. There's a chilling smite and the arcane smash. But Prey Seeker or the red buff, who really knows, will take that. And Score grabs a kill. But Samsung starts to stack on the bottom side. Eve right there. They want to take down this turret. But the Eye of the Storm on the tower. They're still going to get it. Eve knows how to siege, and they're going to get Another two one. towers at the same time, actually. And you know the third one will come very soon as top is perilously low. There is an answering turret by KD, but this is the global goal we're talking about. So despite being two kills in the hole, they are picking up gold around the map. Yeah, they certainly are, so they're on track as long as they can keep their siege up. Taking down that mid turret, so crucial to the effectiveness of their composition. And Fury. Finds himself walking up into top lane right now. His sights set on the last remaining tier one. He doesn't have a dragon timer to work about just yet. Let's see, more than two minutes. We remember the first being taken down and no on screen indicator. So he's able to go freely push. It's going to be a gold advantage for Samsung should they secure that particular objective. And of course, with the average spike that we spoke about earlier, it might not give an immediate power, but powering down the CS so far. Eve going for the Rod of Ages, which is the build that we've seen take over from the tier now that uh, the Rod stacks provide more AP and mana. 
they did previously, so naturally a very good item for Nidalee in the jungle. Although health was at the cost of those offensive stats, you still get more health than the standard Nidalee build that really only had the Seraph's Embrace shield to show, cause any sort of immediate tankiness. I mean, I don't really see the point of a lot of extra health on jungle Nidalee because is a couple hundred HP really going to save you in 90% of situations if you're in cougar form and you're taking that damage. I think that if you are taking enough damage to die as a jungle Nidalee, you've already mispositioned. I can understand that, but Nidalee does so much damage in that cougar form, you want to get into it. The answering damage is always going to be registered. If you can itemize it naturally, okay, you can now have this kind of stacking time to work about. Remember, it's probably going to be 21, 22 minute rod of ages, but when it pays off, just the stack of stats it's going to give you, it's going to feel good. Well, Samsung now aggressively posturing around top lane. They want to push down this last remaining tower, which is hanging by a thread right now. KT not going to let him do a teleport play coming in someday already on the outside. There's the Sivir old pop. Glacial Fisher going to delay KT Rolster, but is it enough? Fury very low, and here comes Someday. He's just matching there. Someday, first kill for him, and now more Arcane Smash. They get the slow. Goodbye, Luna. And there's another kill for score. I mean, the TP play has been the game changer for KT this game. They rode out an entire TP timer from Kuve. Kuve just not responding, goes to the split push instead, and KT finding the kills on the map. Kind of the peculiar thing to me, Monte Cristo, is that as you mentioned, QV had the teleport available, also Crown had pressure in mid, so he would have been first to react. There was a potential for collapse, but it probably would have been 4v4 action, whatever happened. Someone was going to die, it was always going to be Fury. But surprising to see, not even a posturing, didn't seem to be, seemed to be a very clear call to QV to just not rotate. Yeah. I don't know about this, I think you have to fight with that Rumble right now, because the more kills you give to this Baokai, especially with the kind of composition that Samsung is running, they are not going to be able to kill him before he gets onto the back line and starts CCing everybody on your team. You don't have enough crowd control yourself to stop him from getting back there. You're just worried about the Aegis that probably is going to be the next item completed by score. Could go into a Randuns, but expecting the Aegis given just the stack of magic damage on Samsung's side. This is the second dragon we talked about. First one was claimed by KT. Poke is very nice for Samsung, but Without the teleport, maybe they've navigated the backline threat of the Maokai. Well, Samsung wants to poke right now. They want to get down the tier one in the top side, but KT just trying, starting to all in the turret right, or the dragon right away. This is the proper decision. They're not, oh, still afraid of that poke, and they're gonna let the dragon reset. That is not a great way to play this if you're KT. Very hard for them to kite upwards because it will be a perfect equalizer spot. It's one of the reasons why Rumble is often on the team that monopolizes those early dragons. The poke is really good, but Navna is setting these lane matchups up. There's always a cost and a benefit. Arrow takes up nice poker damage as well. So now K or Samsung, rather, they've delayed this for a while, and we do see Kuve. He has TP'd into the dragon a bit prematurely. He could have kept pushing in the top side. And KT changes their tactics. They say, well, we've got Nazir. He's just going to dump some sand soldiers into this turret. We're going to take it and dance around this objective. Fury trying to answer with a tier two in the mid lane. And the tier two in the mid lane would be a big, big swap. It would definitely swing towards Samson. They're getting it very, very low. They have good damage, but they're really worried about the fight, and they should be. They should be. They're going to try and recall right now, take out some Rek'Sai tunnels while they do so. Just some arrows firing backwards someday, taking a big chunk of damage over time. So Samsung may have actually fought their way to a favorable trade in a dragon. Yeah, they have the two pink wards down. I didn't really think about So that their pink wards, both in terms of coverage and removal, has been very, very smart. But they're not happy to opt into a fight, even though they've been registering a lot of poke over the course of the last three minutes. This is a really good objective dance between both of these teams. We can see the trading that's going on as they posture around the map. KT now just wants to say, OK, if you go for that dragon, we're going to take your mid-tier one. It's good terrain for KT to fight on. There's no equalizer choke that they have to opt into. So it's definitely the better side. At half of the map, they don't have barren vision, but looks like they're gonna be happy to just force a trade in the end. They could have kind of walked towards Baron and really baited out an, a Samsung face check, but in the end, just end up equaling up the out of turrets. Samsung very fast to get those chipped down and KT quick to answer them. I'm actually very impressed that I, we take a look at Samsung last season as a team that was so woeful. 
And now this time they're actually able to win this kind of rotational trading game against KT Rolster. They played it really, really well. And look, the first 30 minutes of the game, they've made excellent rotation decisions, but how many times have we seen them pick top lane rec side but opt into fights or just understand that they don't necessarily have the team fight and then it feels like the decision making in the late game, whoever's making the late game calls, that's the only spot where Samsung's really fallen down strategically. Well, those late game calls are usually just one where you need a very veteran player to actually execute well and Certainly, Pickaboo and Score, those big shot callers on KT, have been around the scene for a lot longer than most of the Samsung players, especially since Wraith is not playing right now. Of course, Wraith, formerly Casper of SK Telecom, so been around the scene a very long time. We speculated the reason that Wraith was playing more was that potential for veteran shot calling, but Samsung, honestly, regardless of their support, has kind of been around the same spot the whole season. They're never Spenu level in terms of really struggling at the bottom, but they just can't really take more than a single game off the top team. Well, it's true. Samsung really only ever gets one good game in a best of five, and otherwise they get sort of, or best of three rather, otherwise they get sort of run over in the other matchups. And we talked about this early in the season where they would come in with an excellent team cop in one game, really execute on it well, then a couple of picks would get banned out, they sort of pick the same thing again, but slightly worse and lose, and then they get destroyed in game number three. But let's be fair to Samsung. We haven't seen that so much recently. Maybe that's a lack of innovation, or maybe that's them improving their draft base. I guess it's a little bit hard to say. KT were guilty of that to some degree last week when uh, you know they went for they got the successful game off with the Cogmore, moved to Twitch with kind of the same sort of thought behind the comp, and the Twitch pick just really didn't work for them. It really, really did not. We've seen a lot of attempts at, at Twitch, whether it's OQ or Arrow, and none have yet really served to impress. There's the potential, you know, everyone thinks of the best case scenario with Twitch, but the downside, it just what really holds him down. If, especially if you get, if the enemy can bait out your ult, you're just a short range AD carry that's so easy to get on top of and completely deleted. So another attempt here at the top tier one from Samsung. It looks like there's not going to be an anticipated response this time from KT. They were nice and set up last time around, but nobody there to answer. Someday just going on a split pushing mission. Uh, Kuve's done a nice job of actually closing that CS gap in this game. Has that Void Staff right now, so he can be a little bit more comfortable against Someday's magic resist. My big warrior for Samsung. When they're fighting in narrow crevices, they look pretty good. Of course, you can try and guarantee the poke with the likes of the Lion Poke from Nidalee and Crown. You know, the Rumble Equalizer can impact a fight, but the other CC is not really there. You know, they have the Equalizer and what feels like an Equalizer with Luna. So, of course, those two Lion abilities that have good synergy, but they can't really force very much unless the enemy is coming to them, unless they start to control the Dragon. Okay, they've picked up the Answering Dragon, but it feels like if the game is played in the middle, if the game is played in the open, KT has so many repositioning options, and of course the damage reduction from Someday, that Samsung will really struggle to make things happen. Or to hit multiple people with their poke mm. uh, from the Varus or the Boomerang Blade, so. KT looking for the ARAM. That will be <laughs> the ideal for them, but uh, so far just been kind of this war of attrition. Look at Pikachu 2, Medjives. We don't really see that item very frequently onto Janna players like we did towards the end of last year, a bit of a rare buy. We don't see level one gangs either, but Pickaboo, he does it a little bit differently, Monte Cristo. Well, he does. Usually we see something like an Aegis of, Ele of the Legion though onto a support Janna here in Champions, and that, I would have to say, would be much more useful uh, this game, more than likely, with this Janna. Now, animization, surprising to see Score actually goes straight to that Rand. You know, wants to take out Fury and Crown. He's gonna try and ignore the magic damage, so. And Aegis from support would have really helped justify that decision. Oh, Score's score trying to get going of really deep. He's going to take a huge amount of damage. How's a flash out right there? Nogne coming in. Luna starting to pursue. Nogne is just going to get chunked out. Emperor's Divide going to bottle everybody up. And Samsung, I am shocked that they did not drop the equalizer right there to try and make a play out of that. Juve, very awkward timing on the overheat. Wasn't able to put it down. And then kind of by the time he got it available again, the moment had passed. He could have thrown it out and drawn out a flash, chose not to. But Samsung definitely got the minimum out of what was just a poor decision by score. Yeah, I think he must have thought there was a perhaps a ward for somebody to TP to or that he was closer. But Bonsoon down, Emperor's Divide down, those 
are not going to be up by the time the dragon is spawned. The Samsung get position on the dragon from that poor contest from Skull. Remember, just in very simple terms, he was opting into what was looking like a team fight on top of a beautiful equalizer position. You know, they're doing great work, just pushing in mid. You don't need to get too cute unless you have that split timing perfectly. Yeah. Samsung has got the setup right now, even though they don't control the speed shrine. So, eyes on the dragon from KT as it spawns. They at least have that going for them. Someday, here in the jungle, we'll be looking to recall right now. They have some wards down, especially in the tri brush. There's a pink there for someday to go to. Score hasn't been spotted either, just hanging around the bottom side of the map. Someday, as you mentioned, ready for the home guard flame. Uh, arrow. Okay, this well, is Arrow just gets caught by the chain of corruption, and that is going to eliminate KT's hopes of actually contesting this dragon, or so it would appear. Yes, someday just going to home guard his way out of the base right now as Crown gets the drop onto the Corky. Summoner heal not enough to save Arrow as they burst him down. How do these things happen, Monte Cristo? How is it that he just falls down when mispositioning on Corky of all time is the safest of the AD carry options? Well, I don't know. Ezreal's pretty safe, too. Okay, but he he's has... not really an AD carry. Come yeah. on. He gets in the AD carry role when his mid lane is taken away from him cruelly. Okay, well, in the Runeglaive meta, perhaps. We'll see where he goes in some of the more future games, I guess. But yeah, I, I, there is a difference. Like, having that instant flash there. And maybe it's just the reality of knowing you have that ability to reposition gets you to play that much more aggressively. I mean, that's maybe just the reality, because this is consistently the story on Koki, whereas he's just outstanding on the likes of Sivir and Kog'Maw. Yeah. Indeed. You speak truth, sir. So, gold lead going to be evened up, but dragon advantage to Samsung. Very low kill game, but been, been an exciting one in terms of the play on the map right now. In Italy, been the big benefactor, remember. Those 10 minutes of dragon control coincide with her powering up. She's nine minutes into the 10 minutes of the Rod of Ages. I believe it's gonna be completed as I'm completing this sentence. So that's already powered up now, a big AP stack. Looks like the Luden's Echo probably gonna be the next purchase. These spears, they're gonna start to stick. Yeah, to a certain degree, I, I agree with you. But again, come the late game, we've seen these poke compositions do well, but once you get to six items, the damage really starts to fall off. And because these members are so squishy, one small mistake and suddenly deletion is the reality for both Crown and Eve, Rod of Ages or no. Yeah. Fury not going to be too durable either until he can actually get something like a Banshee's Veil to help him live through the crowd control. Teleport flank coming through from the Malka. Here he goes, on the crowd immediately. Crown get caught, popped up. Chain of Corruption not going to save him someday now. All over Fury in the back line. Nothing is going to kill him. Fury going to take a big arcane smash. Huge play there. Fury falls. And the equalizer just not going to be enough. Nagde comes in, bounces the rumble forward for a double kill. And there you go. That's the problem. You get to that squishy back line, and suddenly Baron is a huge opportunity for KT. Crown gets deleted, doesn't take the cleanse, is the first one core, and he will instantly die. Well, what do you do in that situation? He wanted the heal in this game instead of going for the cleanse that would help him against the Maokai. And now that is a Baron for KT Rolster. They just do a huge amount of work. And again, Someday has saved this game for KT. Flash engage. And he just knew there was no vision whatsoever in the area and just put it all on the line and man, the payoff is sweet. And look at this too. Twisted advance stops Nidalee during the pounce with a well-timed arcane smash. Very nicely done. And Kube also mispositions his equalizer right there. Instead of getting it perfectly vertical to actually get more damage down. That could have changed that fight, actually. But you've just seen the difference between Maokai and Rumble. Of course, Rumble needs to set up. He needs to be in position to really lay down, you know, that line skill shot of the equalizer. Maokai put the Nikes on, got the pick, and the team fight was really over there. Equalizer on point or no? Yeah. Well, Pickaboo got some sweet, sweet Magi stacks for that. Oh, finally, yeah. finally gets the talisman of, the asc of Ascension. A very useful tool to use in conjunction with this Rek'Sai and the Maokai. And now Baron going to be coming through. Still very good wave clear for Samsung. Did Siva have any kill potential on Maokai, even with that third 
I mean, the last whisper uh, being completed. I mean, the, the thorn mail thorn now. Thorn mail, frozen oh heart thorn mail. Nope, the answer's no. <laughs> Even Randowans, you know, the Randowans show is actually looking pretty good. The no Aegis is actually starting to pay off for KT. <laughs> well, it's being built now at long last. Score, well, I assume Score will build it. We will see. No guarantee. Well, the Luton's Echo is nearly nearing completion, so there is a certain amount of AP threat, especially when we consider the Rumble, too. I think it's definitely necessary. You know, once you see Nidalee rumble, Aegis should be itemized somewhere in the first 25 minutes. But they went the Randuins, they delete Crown, and honestly, it's looking pretty damn good for KT. Well, they're not really able to do much with this Baron buff. Someday, still going to be taking a large amount of poke damage here. And they're just trying to contain the minions, but no turrets going down for KT. I mean, how are they going to force something? They don't have the home guard available. They don't have, even have Flash from Someday, barring a super risky Azir Sec play. Okay, as the Zonya, so a little bit less risky, but Nagne or Bust for the next five minutes, you have to think, when it comes to really pushing into an inner or inhibitor turret. Uh, maybe they just go for the Dragon and take their second one of the game. Not going to be particularly useful, but at least you can get a little bit of something. I mean, Someday needs more farm. Answering the second Dragon at least really removes the realistic hope of a five Dragon win condition from Samsung. So, you know, ruining someone else's dreams, maybe that has to do rather than trying to big yourself up. That's always my philosophy about the smithing. So keep them down. Keep, keep them down. The Schadenfreude is much more entertaining than uh, my own personal success. So you're the man in this story. <laughs> keeping us legitimate fans down. Try and kill the hype in the broadcast. Expert. We're just waiting for that hype moment. I mean, Nagne was a very nice Azir Patek play onto QV, but it was kind of the cherry on top of what was a really nice team fight for KT. But that's an important factor to consider is the Baron buff. I mean, buying the initial gold, kind of not really a big impact. No, it certainly hasn't been. Uh, they haven't even really been able to take control over the oh, sideways. Scores in a nice spot. Scores in a very nice spot. Here we go. Oh, oh beautiful flank. Luna now forced to pop it early, but there's a nice equalizer coming through. Forces to score a flashback. Someday actually dies right there. He can't get into the back line. Nagne's going to be the hero, forcing everybody back out. And there's a kill for Nagne. Arrow getting low. A double for Nagne. There's the Zonias. Dies immediately. After the Zonias, they're still going to be able to kite. Eve needs to land a spear here, getting some heals down. So two for three, but Samsung ends up with a pretty strong position. Score has the Void Rush if he can get back into this. So they're going to try and burn this Dragon down. They do have the percentage health damage from Cuve. He's choosing to zone, though, and as you mentioned, that's Arrow free rain. Some up, oh, there we go. They yeah, can't do this any longer. No, Score no, full no, HP. No. Arrow healed off of the minion wave at the bottom side. They're gonna try and cook him. Nope, there's a Falcon. They oh. actually get Janna, but... Magi stacks? And, yeah, I guess. Magi stacks. Look, <laughs> it's a one-for-one one trade in the someday. end, so it's something, but... Uh... Someday's up. Someday's waiting. And, nope, no attempt at a steal from Eve. Aren't even able to drag out the teleport, or the QV would have then had a teleport advantage. Both top lanes have teleport up. We're going to see the replay. Score's positioning is wonderful, but opting into the prime equalizer spot really did hold back KT. Yeah, it was really nice kiting from Samsung, too. That could have been a lot worse than it ended up being. Nagde just flashes here, tries to contain uh, Crown and Fury. Does a beautiful job. That is a gorgeous Emperor's Divide to take out two carries. Even the Zonias was super on point. He kind of understood his situation, but was going to at least trade his life for one of the enemy carries. It's someday back to farm in Judy. It was actually one of the better, uh, I think, Azir ults that I've seen in conjunction with Terrain in a really long time. Very nicely done to save that situation after they couldn't fully engage onto the back line. TP's back up, though, for someday, so he will have a better shot at that. And the longer this game drags on, I think Samsung's hopes really diminish unless they can pull off another good, good pick. Unless Nidalee's really on top of things, either instantly deleting someone or just hitting spear after spear onto one of these low magic resist members. At this point, both Rek'Sai and Maokai are going to be largely shaking off Eve's poke, even though a lot of CS, 55 CS up on her opponent, and, you know, a very nice stack of ability power. Yeah, uh, that is definitely true. Uh, the locket is now done, finally at long last for score. That is a much needed MR. 
and someday also leveling his up. He actually changed his cowl into a spirit visage. So they are starting to take the AP threat more seriously. Still no Zonia's on Kuve either. It's the free push for Arrow onto this bottom turret. Wow. No way for Samsung to force it. They were staying as a group, and Corky said, okay, packed his bags and went to the bottom lane. Yeah, and you can see what Samsung was trying to do there. They wanted to get vision control over Baron before it spawned, but it just ended up that they didn't have any defenders in mid or bottom. Uh, KT could have punished that harder, actually. They had the Azir turret in the mid lane. They could have probably gotten both tier twos but they didn't want to risk it. Uh, they didn't have vision in the enemy top side. So, did carry an element of risk. Gold lead 6.7k gold, which for 38 minutes, not massive for Samsung. The big issue is that a lot of that gold's on Sunday, who's level 18, so the highest level in the game. And honestly, unkillable for the likes of Crown and Fury. Yeah, that's pretty disastrous. So, QSS now finished for Arrow 2, should he get caught out by a rogue chain of corruption again. The crowd has to be, crown, sorry, has to be a positioning god. He has a full inventory. He hasn't been able to itemize in a QSS. No flash even at the moment. We discussed the summoner spell cleanse lack to, to death at this point. If the fight comes through, he's going to die, and so will Samsung's hopes. Yeah. Uh, no good wards, though, for KT really to use teleport on. Someday just going to camp in the base right now. Waiting for it. They want to turn. They're going to turn right now, actually. So where's the TP? Oh, they oh, got a baby. deep ward. They had a good one in there. He gets onto Eve right away. His crown's still a little bit free, but there's the exhaust. It gets onto him, and that's a nice equalizer, though, and a good snipe onto Pickaboo. But there goes Crown. He pays for it with his life. A double kill for Nagne, and now they <laughs> just find Kuve in the back line. So uh, the Monsoon does enough to negate the actual equalizer, which was well-placed, and nice blue steal. It was one of those cases where they had to fight around the equalizer. They had to eat the damage, but then they re-engaged. So it almost felt like it was swinging towards Samsung, but they re-engaged by Nagne in particular. was wonderful to see, and now someday, there's no getting through this tree, and there's no denying Baron from KT. I really like the synergy we're seeing between Someday and Nagne this game, because Nagne just holds on every fight to use his ultimate until that comes through. So watch the replay. This equalizer does so much damage. If there was just, you know, some damage numbers here. It's burning down three members of the majority of the fights. Nice challenge by Pikachu, but the re-engage that comes from Nagne in particular. Picture perfect, and now no zones to respect left from Samsung. So free kills are bad. When we see KT team fight with these two champions, Someday goes in first and absorbs so many of the cooldowns. And then once he, once Nogde knows that there's nothing else to lock him down, he immediately follows up with these long range Azir engages. And it's been working incredibly well for them. I, I think it's just fun to see the synergy and the team fights between these two players. And while the KT hype train, look, it was derailed a little bit by SKT, although, you know, it was at least competitive in game one. The, one of the reasons why it needs to kind of be on the rails to some degree is that, you know, we've spoken at length about score and pick of you. Viewers probably tired of us talking about that duo. Suddenly now we're talking about Someday and Nagne. That's already two duos that are certainly on the same wavelength as we hit the business end of the season. Yeah, very nice team fighting from KT. And uh, there were some misplays, obviously, but KT uh, has shown that they are just better at setting up these team fights. KT repeatedly in this game thinking one, two minutes in advance. Uh, to set up the teleport plays, and that has been the big, big difference maker. Hello, Someday, right into the back line. Goodbye, everybody dead. Underneath the turret, Arrow going to grab one onto Luna, and now they're just going to pile on through every single tower, diving multiple turrets deep. Kube, the next target, and that'll be at another double kill for Nagne as he really starts to deliver on this Azir, and now they're just going to go through triple kill in the end and they actually take out two turrets en route to a deep dive ace. And they're just still diving. They don't have a minion wave still, but with 30 seconds on any semblance of wave clear, this should be KT getting back on the train after that SKT series. Well, it was close at first, but KT plays the map a whole hell of a lot better. They get the teleports. They shut down the poke composition with time. They get to that point of tankiness. And that'll be a win for KT Rolster in game one of this series. So much kill participation for the Maokai, for the Rek'Sai. 10-1-4 is the kill score for Nagne. 
And we have to start talking about this guy, Zazia, and in, in general his season, because it might have been a slow burn at the start, but Narkna is really standing up in the last few weeks. Well, he's actually been very reliable. I won't say that Nagne is certainly not an, at an elite level of mid laner, sure. but he is a guy with a large champion pool who does his job. Now the question comes, at the top level of competition, do KT have enough true carries to actually take a game? Someday, as you shut him down, seems like it's pretty easy to play around. Someday, two minutes in advance, you see Someday very patiently waiting for the exact right timing and the coordination definitely there in that last game. So I don't know if we're going to be seeing a poke composition from this Samsung roster again. Ezreal banned out by KT in game number two. Just a fate band away as well. These are some of the picks that Samsung have put to good use so far uh, in their season. Um, not able to pick up a win in the first game. Were competitive to a point, but then, as is often the case between Engage and Poke, if Engage ever gets a foothold in the mid game, say goodbye, Poke game. Yeah, that is very true. So, KT, this game, are they going to try and first pick the Kogma or the Braum here? Uh, Annie will be the band. And there's the Kog'Maw, so you, you gotta think they're gonna take Braum with this new found fascination with first picking it. Uh, they do have some other options, such as Rek'Sai, or Gragas, or perhaps even Alistair. Victor may be an outside bet, but I don't feel like Nagne's Victor is really the cornerstone of a lot of their victories. He's played a lot of that champion, I believe he's five and four for the season, but Braum seems to loom as the first pick champion when the likes of Kog'Maw, and maybe those auto first picks like Rise, are just not on the table. Well, this is locked in. We will have seen Braum first pick on blue side in four out of our five games tonight. Crazy. Yeah, very interesting turn of events. And it was drafted in the first round in every single game. So the only other champion to be taken first tonight was Rek'Sai, which certainly is an option here. Rek'Sai has been first pick status since release, almost it feels like. Of course, fallen in and out of popularity, but often looms a bit like Thresh to return as a first round pick. Just does so much with her kit, does Rek'Sai. Yep, and so the Azir was a crown favorite before it started being mass banned. They will take the Braum and the Azir. Nagne going to have to come up with something different this game. Can always just go, go right back to the victor, no problem. It's probably not going to be the Yasuo. We yeah, see Yasuo tonight though, so maybe we've had our fill of Yasuos for the evening. Wave clear wars in mid does seem to loom as the matchup. What does KT want to do? Because the balanced uh, engage comp certainly worked out. I mean, there's an argument. Just go Maokai and let it all sort itself out from there. If somebody wants to go on that pick again, it would be his 12th game of the season on Maokai. Nine and two at the moment, so you can see the draw because they do a whole hell of a lot of winning and his KDA is insane on that champion. Sivir. Will Arrow go back to his Scuttle Crab ways? I think he will. The answer is basically always yes. <laughs> he excites us with Cogmores. Cogmores banned away. The Corky, it was fine in the end. It didn't end up being a big factor. And oh, we're going to see engage wars between Alistair and Braum. Yep. Alistair and Sivir. So KT holding off. They want to see what is going on in a little bit more of this composition before they commit to either of their solo lane pickups, even though they already know what the enemy mid laner is going to be. There are some questions such as, how safe is Victor going to be? We don't know the answer to that just yet. Flexibility in the first five picks, nothing revealed whatsoever. So I'm going to be considering a jungler. They want to do brawling, Lee Sin. Could be a pickup. Eve is very mechanically talented. I wouldn't mind seeing the Lee Sin come through. And Fury, one of the better Lucian players uh, that we have in this league. And when we talk about those lane dominant players like OQ and Fury, Ooh. they are going back to the Lucian in a lot of these matchups, particularly when there's that chance to actually lane against that Sivir. Now, in with the Lee Sin, mm -hmm. we've seen this more. Lyra actually had two outstanding games on Lee Sin just the other day against Spenu. You build that warrior enchant, you can still do a lot of damage early, but is a bit hard to play against that Rek'Sai who can match you with some of that early pressure. So Victor likely going to be the pick for Nagde. Is a bit dangerous, especially post Azir level six where that all in with the Lee Sin could be quite dangerous. So what is the top lane they want to pair with what seems to be the Victor that we've had flashed for a lot of this pick and ban phase. Very balanced comp from Samsung, not really tipping towards anything. 
clearly not going to be a poke comp this time. Going to be more balanced team fight comp. Well, they don't have engage yet, though. True. So that is the issue. So taking away the Maokai may mean that Samsung doesn't get the most reliable engage as they take the Maokai and the victor. So very standard from KT. I was wondering if they were going to peace out and go towards the Shen, but maybe they're going to think about lane dominance in basically all of the lanes. There is the argument they could win three lanes and the jungle matchup if they lock in the fits. Yes, definitely on the table. They are going to lock it in. But after Sunday's performance in the last game up against Kube, where he managed to bully his way to a very large lead with the help of score, we're going to have to see more ganks in the bottom side from Eve. Now, Samsung has a really good 4-1 split push going on. If that Fizz starts to win, the Azir and the Lucian are going to be great when it comes to quickly knocking down turrets and providing a lot of siege pressure. But still, great wave clear from KT, so it's not going to be easy. It's not like Samsung have wonderful wave clear, but certainly very active wave clear between Azir and Lucian. So it might not be instant like the Siva, but a lot of answers on both sides. Really, the big question mark is how do you get through the laning phase if you're KT? Because Maokai reliably is being beaten by the Fizz. Azir in the early levels has an advantage over Victor, especially before that hex core upgrade. And we already mentioned Lucian's a lane counter to the Siva. Well, I think a lot of it is going to come down to how well these teams are able to lane swap, especially that's going to be the priority for KT Rolster. They end up in standard lanes. Samsung may be able to just pressure them to the win. But that said, we go late. Samsung, again, going to be finding themselves in a situation where they can't dictate when and where team fights start very easily, barring some sort of crazy flank from Kuve and Eve that kicks a carry out. So we are going to go into game two, KT versus Samsung right now. Well, Samsung stuck with KT in the early game in the last one, trying to use that poke composition, but the flanks ended up outfoxing them in the late game. Samsung switches up their strategy. Now they don't want to group at all. Now they have all of the early game Monte Cristo. You know, they do have the potential to take over this game. No better jungler than Lee Sin to really cap off what is an early game focus, split push focus comp. Not to say that late game team fights are completely out of their purview, they just need to be in a scenario where QV is at all times dictating what Someday is doing. If QV is all over Someday, I don't even mind the team fighting as I see you audibly wince to the left. Oh, it's just, I don't I don't think that QV is going to be in a good position not to just get blown up. There's mm -hmm. so much crowd control, even though he does have that playful trickster, the victor burst can just kind of one-shot him. So, it does make me a a bit nervous. Look, I can understand being a bit apprehensive, but Maokai can get really taken out of a game by Fizz. Only yes. Rise has shown that sort of level of just taking over the game, pushing down turrets, you know, being able to take inhibitors as the enemy top laner watches. Is that going to happen this game, given the prowess from uh, Someday on Maokai and, you know, a good ganking jungle on Rex? I Probably not, but if there's ever a scenario where you're swapping inner turrets or inhibitor turrets for a Maokai to impact a team fight, that's a one, potential one game for Samsung. Could be. And the lane swap, though, looks like someday just going to take the third little Raptors there and now head out to the red to help out the score. And there is Pickaboo just being annoying. Wants some experience, but no other skills available. Can't just get in there and uh, cow slap the last hit onto one of those little. A red buff minion, so just has to back away. Hello, Luna. Actually going to get some nice concussive blows down there, and will proc it for the stun. Hits him with a chair. Pretty sure if the ref saw that, that would be a disqualification. Is that how it works? It is. If the ref sees it, it's a disqualification. <laughs> if you've noticed at all in wrestling, I know you haven't watched a lot of it, the ref very often looking somewhere other than the guy <laughs> with the chair. It's a bit brazen, this, this uh, Braum, I have to say. And one of the other wrestlers just slips a, a blindfold on him. The opportune moment. I uh, usually maybe the the attractive woman has to have a discussion with the referee <laughs> at the side of the ring. There's all sorts of things happening. <laughs> Wrestling's a weird and wonderful place. <laughs> Do the, can you hit somebody with a ladder? Is that the same rule? Uh, if he doesn't see it, yeah. All right. It's a bit harder to hide the ladder when you're <laughs> done with it. <laughs> 
It's happened, though. <laughs> I believe you. The most fun thing about wrestling is that, you know, the championship belt, it's a nice meaty thing, but apparently if you hit people with it, despite it being leather and questionably heavy, knocked out every time. Wow. I mean, it does have a lot of metal on it. It does. So, score. We're going to face a bit of harassment right here from Luna as he moves into the top side. We are going to have a 2v1, it would appear, with Kuve. Going to get a little bit of support from the Braum. And this situation, this is kind of what KT wanted here. They don't have to worry about getting denied very heavily in the early laning phase. All of the wave clear versus none of the wave clear as Sivir and Fizz were trained in the middle of our screen. Yeah, that is, uh, that is, might be pretty bad right there. Not a lot of ways they can help. Scorch is slowly moving forward through the lane brushes as the vision gets chained right there. He wants to make sure that Arrow is going to be okay, that he's not going to get all in. They have a ward there. Here we go. Nope, Kube and Luna not committing to that. They have no idea that Score is there. He's still not wanting to get on top of Arrow. He's looking so damn tasty. I'm surprised they haven't called the bluff here. Uh, I, uh, I think that they, they are very wary about the possibility of getting wreck side. And, but that said, some CS will be lost into the turret after that little maneuver. And we get a little bit of a wave reset here from Arrow and some more time just farming in the top lane. Someday should take a CS advantage off of this wave in comparison to Kuve. Still a decent kill pressure. You wouldn't think that Maokai and Alistair would have that much damage between the two of them, but with the high early values, Lucian has to be a little bit careful. Kind of nice to be in a world where Lucian, you know, saw bans in the previous series and his prize pick here in Series 2. Well, yeah, I think it just comes down to the players that we have. Of course, whenever you have, we're talking about uh, OQ and Fury are going to get a few more of these Lucian bans than we might otherwise see. We've seen the no damage Lucian games. They happen just like Corky, but man, when OQ goes off specifically on Lucian, so much damage. Well, Fury is no slouch himself. I've watched many a game where, where Fury has been impressively carrying on that champion, but without the standard lane matchups, he's just not going to have the same punch and early game potential. Well, he's in a 1v2. Yeah. He's doing the best that he can. If you look at the CS values, doing very capably, in fact, both these guys. You'd think Arrow would have the advantage with just slightly more ranged wave play, but uh, they're very even between the AD carries in this weird position. Maybe they're getting a little bit of sympathy for their top laners, finding themselves in eventual 1v2s. As scores there to relieve pressure, but uh, not much happening around the rim. Well, just waiting right there, being very patient. He is seen on a ward right by his Grom, so they have every idea of where he is, but they're gonna have to back off as Score just goes into the tri brush to recall. They don't know if he's going to be waiting around. Green ward they had, that peekaboo, I believe Luna put down, has gotten so much value. First, it gave them the idea that perhaps they were in that situation where Rek'Sai was in the top brush, and then now just getting the exact positioning on Rek'Sai, so. A very, very valuable green ward as way player, way player, way player. Indeed. Score coming back down to the bottom side alongside Eve. Not much going on, actually. Nagne doing a good job of CSing in the mid lane. A lot of times we see Victor is just bullied out early by the Azir poke. Not going to be the case this game. It's like a pretty passive time there. So, see the culling used by Fury. Obviously wants to go back and pick up an item. 36 CS. Not sure if he quite has BF Sword Gold. In fact, it's significantly behind Ziva. Oh, nice flash there from Crown. They had just hit six. He was looking for that Emperor's Divide, but Nagne had some fast fingers to avoid that ultimate. It's actually smart by Fury. He went back, drew out the recall from Someday, and now was able to just farm up a little bit more, pick up the CS towards that BF, so he did not have the gold to pick it up earlier. This hasn't impacted any lanes. In fact, two ganking junglers, surprisingly, has been relegated to farming their jungles. Sometimes that can happen with these lane swaps if you don't have a good opportunity and no one is willing to make a counterable aggressive move. Someday, heading up with two Doran's Rings and two Ruby Crystals. The raw stats are real that is in this top side. So much early health. That's actually a really good idea because with the mixed damage coming in from Kuve, of course he has that magic damage from his abilities, but he's actually ruined for uh, AD. Now here we go, flash up, crown is dead. And Pickaboo actually snags the kill in the end with the Pulverize. 
Headbutt pulverized to death. <laughs> and they knew the uh, they knew the flash was down, so why not go for that play? The cleanse not going to be doing you very much good on a knockup and the instant burst from Victor, so they take a nice little advantage right there. Crown instead picking the cleanse this game. Remember last game he went heal, which actually is more useful in the lane matchup versus the Victor sure. or Barrier. But in this circumstance, I think he has to respect the Maokai, which is something he did not do on the Victor last game. And he got locked down quite frequently in the back lines. Early rotational play from KT has really paid off. You know, of course, we just saw the kill in mid, but just, you know, going back to the top lane matchup someday, all of the early game items, and Cuve hasn't found a time to shop at all. So just sitting on Doran Blade. This is actually a lopsided matchup towards the Maokai as things stand. And not only that, but BF Sword versus Pickaxe in the bottom lane. So Fury wasn't able to hit the recall timing he wanted to, and now he is going to be even less likely to bully. So KT coming out of this lane swap in a very good position, considering that Samsung really was playing for the early game. Uh, someday, as I was saying earlier, with this Fizz, he's, go he's going to be doing that raw magic damage from his abilities, mm -hmm. but he has the runes and masteries to pump up his attack damage and now the Sheen. So flat health, very, very good in this particular situation. And this is a, a little bit of a new build against the, the Fizz that we're seeing from someday as a sort of triage against early game damage. Speaking of triages, the tree gets on top of Cuba. I realized that was terrible, but <laughs> I heard it in my head and had to go for it. Able to play full trickster away. Miss on the uh, Winter's Bite right there. There comes the Glacial Fisher, but they really can't do much. Pikachu able to hold on to his ultimate throughout all of that. So they traded the Glacial Fisher for just the on the hunt. Did get a favorable damage trade down, but that was about it. The unique thing about Ruby Crystals now, it feels like pretty much the best item the game builds into Giant's Belt, builds into the Catalyst, you know, went for the Catalyst in the early start here. Built into Cowl. Just builds into everything, so very happy to just get those Ruby Crystals for as much early pressure and delaying any potential for Cuvee to go for those all-ins and try and dictate that 1v1 matchup. In the meantime, Samsung, they've managed to get complete pressure over this Dragon, despite there being a pink ward sticking out. Not enough for any sort of contest to come through. KT. If you're KT, though, you're not going to really mind giving up that first dragon. It's not that big of a deal for you uh, because you are going to be confident in your late game anyway. Nice trade there with Pikaboo onto the anime or the cancel on the culling. Eve also going for the warrior chat. I really prefer to see this on Lee Sin. Yes, he didn't get it until after the sight stone, so prioritizing the vision, but. It's just such a good item on Lee Sin. Make the plays on the lanes right now. That's how you're going to win. Someday gets fished. A little bit late, actually. It's a late fish. I think maybe he was trying to wait out the 10 seconds and try and get the bonus damage not to be completely negated because, of course, 20% bonus damage, 20% reduced damage. Not the best interaction for Cuve and doesn't have a lot of sustain. Remember, with the advent of, you know, Samsung basically expecting the lane swap, started Doran Blade and now doesn't have any sort of flask to really keep himself healthy. And he's getting poked out by all the early stats that Someday's picked up. And score right there on the push. Void rushes into this top side. That means they either get a dive or he protects Someday while he pushes forward against a counter gank. Great positioning from both of the junglers here in the necessary places at the right times. He yeah, thought about rotating left lane, but then just been forced to go back to mid. I'll still be the first person to impact it. Uh-oh. Well, Pickaboo. Not going to commit to any topside play. Instead, they're just going to scare Kuve off. And score now, once the Krugs, he gets the Krugs. Eve left watching. Left. Definitely got a lot more respect for Eve than he had to show against either of the junglers that Jin Ewe would have field, or Spenu, for example. In game one, Italy was just farm mode. Unfortunately, Lee Sin has as well. I don't know if that scores reputation, but man, he's holding down enemy junglers either directly or indirectly. Yeah, they're not going to take the tower, though, even though they were able to zone Kuve off. They just make him miss a wave of XP. Someday actually going for a Righteous Glory right now, so not building any resist. Luna caught out. Oh, Luna, bye. And there's the knockup. Gravity Field going to zone him out right there. Jumps to Eve and has to flash, but that's going to be oh, not quite a kill. And There's no dragon, so KT... Not going to be able to do too terribly much with this besides get some wards down. Luna actually surprisingly living through that. 
And Fury, 23 CS behind, now can't have any lane pressure because he just saw multiple members from KT go to his blue side jungle. Look, if he's the loser of all of this, you know, he's going to really bemoan the fact that, you know, he's been doing fine in his lane with no pressure whatsoever and the game being played around him to the point where he's behind to an Avarice Blade AD carry. Yeah, that is not good when he picked up that BF sword after the pickaxe. Now the pressure coming in. They're going to get the turret. Arrow and Peekaboo grab the gold. So early leads tilting towards KT, 2,000 gold. The advantage, and this composition designed to win lane and crush the early game from Samsung, not panning out. Uh, it's unfortunately, it's been equal a losing lane, and you know, at least in slowly building the warrior enchant, it just feels like if you build it at 15 minutes without impact any lanes, if you just pick Lee Sin and are 0 0 0 at 14 minutes into the game, you've just missed a window that is really your only claim to relevance as a champion. Yeah, especially when you're just going for the damage build, too. Mm. I, I mean, I do think that this is the way to play it, but you have to be able to find openings on your opponents and we uh, have a willingness to play aggressively. But I think Samsung was sort of living and dying by the, uh, by the lane swap here when they didn't get standard lanes, it really did hurt their chances in this game. Perfect hex call rush comes through from Nunga. We don't see this very often. He had the two upgrades. We don't often see any more gold spent into it. Of course, if he does hit that gravity field, you know, the the, the pull into the middle might be a relevant CC. Of course, the ult will last more ticks. It's just strange to see. Maybe it was just filling his inventory with uh, potions and wards just meant that the opportunity cost of throwing in any more ability power like a blasting one just wasn't what he wanted. Yeah, it's it's weird too because at, at one time you could say, well, maybe he just did that because he couldn't afford a needlessly large rod, but that's like not really true. I mean, the difference between a thousand and twelve fifty yeah. gold is negligible. That's just an extra wave, if that. So, very surprising to see. I hope it works out for him. Mm. I hope we see the the early gravity field play where everyone just gets sucked in and then Rexai knocks Can them you up. imagine and then Rexai Arcane Alistair? Smash. Rexai Alistair into... Oh my goodness. <laughs> it could be truly epic. <laughs> right, well, we're ready to be made believers <laughs> by none. This is, this is the play I want to see. So five-man mm -hmm. gravity field. Everyone gets us sucked in the middle. Rexai and Burrow pulverize arcane smash and then all the time it's boomerang blade and ricochet with a chaos storm on top so like why were they all standing in <laughs> the gravity field to start that all off uh, you got to go for the lucky play sometime wow arrow just gonna walk right into a brush with eve has to use the summoner heal uh. just to get away and he's still going there's the kick on the hunt forces the flash and here comes the culling Awkward plays, but Pickaboo is here to make a play onto Fury. Nice flash on the headbutt. And a kick flash was really nice for me, but doesn't get the advantage. Nangne shows up with that perfect tech score and gets the kill. There you go. Justified right worth. there. So much worth. To be fair, it's super annoying when you're walking away and still the perfect hex score keeps up with you. So it did get some nice chip damage onto Crown, but not seeing that big W just yet. <laughs> the epic Victor W. Well, that little skirmish, and thanks to Samsung committing so hard into the bottom side, and Nagde having that cutoff will mean the Dragon goes to KT Rolster as they continue to expand their lead. Their gold lead now up by a further thousand. And here we go, Score gets a Zeerd. And here comes a TP, actually. Fizz going to get into the mix. Score has to run. Arrow and Pickaboo were there someday there, too. So it's five versus four in favor of KT right now. They just need to disengage. Don't need to go crazy. Nice spell shield onto the Sonic Wave, and KT smoothly just going back into the mid lane to defend. The dragon's not spawned yet. Just looking for some wave here to come through. It's very strong from Samsung. It is kind of being bled out of this game, though. 3,000 gold behind when you've picked for lane, just because of smart swapping by KT, presents a pretty big problem for Samsung. Yeah, you could definitely say that, and they just don't have the siege at this point to get going this fizz if he groups is still sort of useless he's very squishy i mean he's got a trinity force and nothing else grouping is not what he's picked for he's just used his summon to teleport look there's just so much early stats though coming through from someday okay no specters cow but i remain to be convinced that qv will be bossing around this tree this game yeah 
especially with how much attention Score has played to this top side this entire game, ever since we saw this 1v1 come through after the initial swap. Does this Fizz top loom to be kind of like the Evelyn jungle where we thought, okay, Evelyn jungle super effective when people don't know how to play around it, then suddenly teams have to figure it out. Okay, there's still times for Evelyn jungle, but it feels like the must pick, must ban time has passed. Is this top lane Fizz versus Maokai counter pick matchup? Look, we know the potential, but teams are getting better and better at playing around it. And we're not seeing, you know, the Marin Flame Horizons being passed recently, at least. Yes, that is true. Marin did win a couple of games versus Ku in that matchup, but it wasn't like he had those big time solo kills that he really stylishly debuted on with that champion. It's it's definitely less of a sure thing these days as we see some of these builds like the one that someday showed off in this game, especially when there's not that early bullying that keeps the Maokai too terribly behind in gold. Sure, somebody's having to play more reserve now, but uh, still doing all right. Yeah, at the cost of nothing is kind of the big consideration. He's not losing his turret. There's no Trinity Force procs coming onto the enemy turret. You're getting free farm, are you, Kuve? But you, know, you mentioned this in particular. Always kind of a question as to what Fizz can get done in a team fight unless he's causing significant lane pressure. Heave has just been seen by wards this entire game. He will be sussed out very quickly. They want someday to push forward now that they know that the wave is going to be reversing soon. It's going to be a long wait for Eve, though. It's a game of frustration. Still 0 0 0 on Lee Sin at oh, soon They're going to gonna dive him, actually. There's the fish going down. Someday's going to pop his ult right after that. Pickaboo's already here. Someday getting low. Will twist in advance onto Eve, and Eve just getting knocked around right now. Nope. Pickaboo will get the kill. Kuve now has to deal with this Nagne victor in his top side. And by can't actually get out of this one at all. Score will take the second kill. Arrow already in the mid lane. He's there to prep the wave clear just in case Samsung commits. They read that from so far away and very patient play from KT to just react first. So let's just try and take a side. Okay, what did they have? What was the information they had? Of course, they saw the ward in the second rush knowing Lee Sin was coming into lane. Instantly Pickaboo bounding his way up top with the Moby Boot. Instantly they have their mid laner react first to the ensuing kills that they can pick up and they had their AD carry there for Wave Clear. So you're talking about prepping two or three minutes ahead. Okay, that was maybe 45 minutes, 45 seconds to a minute, but masterful rotations from KT. Yeah, very nicely played. And the thing is, even if Lee Sin had recalled in the brush, that was at least one kill mm. if Kuve didn't back off. And I think they were inferring, well, if Kuve isn't backing off, then Lee Sin is probably already here. Therefore, we're just going to send four guys into the top side. We send our wave clear to a different lane, control the map, pick up a kill or two, and now we're going to be very well situated for the next dragon spawn. Uh-oh, Luna actually getting knocked back and knocked up. Taking a lot of damage right there, but is able to dissuade Score and Pickaboo from following up too severely with the help of Eve and Fury. Actually keeps his ultimate available. We didn't have to use that before the Crucial Dragon fight. Oh, Crown, here we go. Knocked back with the Emperor's Divide, but there is Arrow. Ooh. Great flash. Nice, aggressive streak to be seen from Arrow. And look at this, too. There was almost no risk to that flash because Pickaboo was in the blue side jungle, so they knew that if Arrow flashed forward right there, there was not going to be any chance to follow up whatsoever from Samsung. So great comms from KT as they look to continue to snowball on these uh -oh. objectives. This is where things get Void ugly. rush, this fish, void rush. Here we go, score on the other side of the map right now. Kuve trying to dance around underneath the turret. There's the old pop for a little bit of extra damage. Kuve is getting boxed in, Pickaboo's here. Goodbye, score gets another. And this is the reality. Honestly, it looked like Maokai was gonna win the 1v1 anyway, but the ensuing help guaranteed the kill. Samsung's not winning these lane matchups, Monte Cristo, and doesn't look like they're gonna win this game. No. Too far behind now, and with the precision at which KT is playing the map, they just continue to punish these desperate moves by Samsung as they try to claw their way back into this game. Someday now, working on a frozen heart, so many wards in the inventory of KT Rolster. Can you just talk about the time economy? I don't know we have, I know we don't have a direct stat for this, but the amount of time that Eve has been trying to get a gank and just failing miserably, still no kill involvement barring his own death this series, and the likes of Pickaboo who seems to just casually wade into combat wherever he goes. 
I think that's just a shot call in reality. I just think KT are that much further ahead of Samsung that even though Samsung, much more solid team, they still have a lot to aspire to and a lot to learn from KT. I think what's scariest about KT is when we see them get ahead, remember that 2-0 they had over Jin Air, where mm. Jin Air only got one kill in a best of three. How can I forget it? That was as one-sided the series as Score was called out, but they have the damage taken yeah, down. Yeah, they have the kick, they have the TP. Score actually just gonna flash out right there. A little bit of an awkward Maokai delay. Time. And here comes the Maokai on to Luna. Kube going to be caught out there too, and there is Kube's death. Uh, two for zero, score playing it a bit fast and loose, but hell, his team is there to get him the kills, and that'll be the first kill of the game for Samsung, but it comes at the cost of their AD carry in trade for a support someday. May not survive this one. There is an Azir turret in the mid lane. He doesn't have that option to back down towards his team. Not ideal to pass the kill score over to Eve, but that's all they're able to do, so we see a three for two trade. Overall, in the advantage of KT and the Dragon, Pink Ward even plopped down, uncontested. Yeah, as I was saying about KT, I think what's interesting is that when they get an advantage, they are able to snowball it so efficiently as we take a look at this fight. And look, Samsung stopped doing damage for a second. They were respecting the oncoming course. Maybe that was just a shock hole to get the hell out, but it means that score doesn't die, and as the fight goes on, Cuve, just completely useless despite having a CS advantage this whole game. <laughs> Exhaust Maokai ult, not going to lead to a good time for a Fizz. So I'm going to try it again. KT, when they get that lead, we can see them just doing so much work on the map. They completely shut down Jin Air. Even in game one against SK Telecom, once they started to get into the enemy jungle, Bengi and Wolf really didn't have a chance against Score and Pickaboo's control over the pace of the game. And we're seeing it again here. They didn't come out to an early game advantage in the last one, but this one they really, really have. And they just seem like they cannot be beaten right now when they get ahead. I think I agree with you. If in the first five minutes you give them an inch, they will take that proverbial mile, whether it's going and just dumping on your jungler, as they've done against the likes of Catch, as they've done against the likes of Chaser, you know. Definitely differing levels of jungle talent right there, or just in their rotational play. Whenever they get ahead, they're setting things up for the victory in two minutes, the victory in five minutes, the win conditions they've set up from Champion Select. It's the sign of a top team. Absolutely is. So, big lead. Big, big lead. I mean, big lead, and even the itemization is not helping Samsung. Trinity Force, look, it's nice damage, but it's not helping them in team fights. The Warrior Enchant from Lee Sin's not scaling any further into the game. And that's the only hope and prayer that Samsung have, is scaling for what, on paper, a very, very tricky 5v5 to win. And unless Fizz picks up some more items, almost impossible to get into that backline. Seems like it is a far cry for the Samsung team to actually pull out a victory. And they've also had to spend a lot of money on, on things like the Home Guard enchant from Kube, which is further delaying how much, how tanky he can actually be. And he needs a Frozen Heart more than he needs that Cowl, but. That's the world he lives in, Monte Cristo. That is the world he lives There's in. a lot of things he needs. He's got damage, but he's going to slowly split push away at the top. Of course, not AP Fizz. So although he's got five points now into the Playful Tricks, that still takes time to clear waves. And Maokai. Show up late, get a couple of gromps, and clear a wave. Well, they have all the wave clear here. Glory pop just to zone him off, and they want to get some free damage onto the tower. They will get that very poor Glacial Fisher from Luna. is easily spell shielded by Arrow. Yeah, the Grom certainly not been a massive factor, although there's not really a lot of ranged auto attacks to proc the damage or proc the concussive blows. Remember, it's only Lucian and Azir as ranged auto attackers, and they've had so many threats they've had to respect, specifically the Maokai, that Brom would hardly mention his name all game. Yep. That priority first round of the draft on the red side for Samsung, but it's just not really working out. It doesn't really synergize very well with the rest of their team. No engage. And Crown, oh boy, the noose is tightening right now. Luna gonna block some of that damage on the hunt already popped. Crown is just surrounded right now. Has to use that Azir, and now he's gonna try and make an escape, but guess what, Nogne's there. Meanwhile, Arrow just starting to clean this one up. Score has to fall back. Score will fall and get shut down, but Kuve pays for it. And now here comes the follow-up, 
as Peekaboo uses that ultimate. How, where's the Twisted Advance? Not gonna come through, and actually, Crowd manages to live, surprisingly. Peekaboo was 10 seconds away from the flash. Flash headbutt pulverized, loomed as the re-engage tool that KT needed. So one for one overall is the trade. Not bad for Samsung, buying time. But time towards what? Yeah, time towards what? And the fact of the matter is, is that Score has Void Rush available. They could just rush Dragon. Kuve, oh, Kuve will have TP by that time. So very narrow timing window avoided by Samsung and Kuve. Arrow oh, fails his flash. Oh, that's a bad look for Arrow. Solo killed by Crown. Just too aggressive with his recall. It was a it was a silly place to recall. It's always that level of greed where I'll just step out a little bit. I'll have so much more time to get my sweet items. I'll be back to kill. Oh, dear. <laughs> I've made a terrible mistake. I think I've made a terrible mistake. Definitely ringing through Arrow as he's just sad about his disgrace. His first death this game, though. KT certainly hasn't given up much to the enemy team and score. Not really going to be able to defend this by himself, but with his friend the tree. They will not actually do anything. Oh, so that's another bit of global gold, but still a lot to arrest. Two turrets behind, a dragon behind, and 5,000 gold is the lead for KT. Interesting build from Nagme, just really, it feels like, for one thing you can say for sure, is that this Chaos Storm is going to be ripping through the enemy team. <laughs> has, some, uh, has some good MR, too, just to get a little bit more out of if he gets a Zeared or actually even just a little bit of that fizz damage too gonna be helping him out. I can't help but notice. Don't like a Zia sec, you don't like the Shurima Shuffle. A Zia, that's just... A Zia. I like a Zia sec just fine. I don't like Shurima Shuffle because... Um, it doesn't mean... It doesn't, it doesn't mean describe anything. anything. Like, for example, slicing Maelstrom. What a great thing to say during a team fight. Shurima Shuffle sounds like a bad ice cream flavor. Also, I, I really hate the lore, and I hate referencing the lore. I think that also when you name a play in esports terms at the professional level, I like Insect because it's actually named after a player in a point in LOL esports history. And the ZSX Q is also a nod to the same yep. player. Yep. So I, I prefer that personally. Samsung finally getting time onto that uh, top turret with the Trinity Force, so we'll take it down, but obviously at the cost of the third Dragons, suddenly a 42 minute win condition being opened. Uh, for KT in terms of the fifth dragon. Oh, oh boy. Wow. Oh. Holy smokes. Oh my goodness. That was so much damage from Nogne. The burst was immense. Oh my goodness. Goodbye, Kube. Oh. And here comes Eve. He's trying to get something out here, but he gets immediately bounced out. His insect is just spoiled. Gets a kick to prevent them from killing him, but that's all he could do. He's trying to finish off Nogne, but Pickaboo was there on the defensive headbutt. And that. Those, that damage, that one rotation of spells murdered multiple people from Nana. It's not quite what you hoped for in the early game, but damned if it wasn't close. Wow, that was so massive. And KT, that happened so fast. Their coordination on that engage was instant. Okay, OGN, 0.25 second replay, please, just to see <laughs> just the, the damage numbers will be disgusting in the replay. So let's just watch it. Let's see if we get the slow-mo, but... I mean, Pinkaboo right. just coming through here, and <laughs> holy how there's just not even time to respond look at the coordination between someday and Pickaboo right there to get the chain of knockups right on through and then just look Cube comes in Cube doesn't have the items to fight these team fights he's dead as well and Eve look he got them off himself but pushed them towards the inhibitor I'm just so impressed by KT they seem to know the exact timing on some of these engages because that couldn't have been more perfectly done KT looking good, you know, that's that's the reality, okay. Maybe they won't go to Worlds, but they're certainly getting things together as we get to the latter parts of the season. Well, they're making a strong case for it regardless of what happens. And they are looking for that playoff seed, and with this 2-0 victory, they will convincingly take third place, which is a great place for them to be right now. And not even out of the argument for the second spot, okay? Yeah. They won't be in pole position, but on this form, doesn't look like they're going to be dropping too many games. Uh, it's very important. If they can take the second spot away, they're going to be in prime position when it comes to the gauntlet, too. If they have to qualify for the World Championship that way, because that's worth a lot of points. I mean, this is such an important tournament because the gauntlet format basically means that you are going to be 
basically, if you the higher seed you take now, the better you'll do this season, but the better you'll also do in the gauntlet. Here we go, another great engage, and they're gonna have to use the Emperor's Divide just to push people out right there. Someday is all over Kube, exhaust already down, and double kill for Arrow, trying to chase this Fizz away. Not going to get too much, though, as Kube is able to escape in the end, but they are going to get a Baron Mobility. as they take down the first two targets off of the engage. Mobility spells means no Penta Penta call from Arrow this particular game. <laughs> Has to be content with a double kill when we're talking about the likes of Lee Sin, Fizz, Braum, all with repositions. In fact, all five champions with those gap closes. But you know, they were just waiting to push the trigger and finally pick a boot. Righteous Glory into double head buckle. Well, Samsung, they have to expect that, right? The turret's going down. Pick a boot had already popped his glory. You basically just disengage or you die right there. And yeah, a little bit of both. Yep, a little bit of both. They got half and half. It's definitely not the type of half and half you want. It's more like chocolate ice cream. What's your ice cream flavor? I think we've had this discussion before. But green tea. Green tea ice cream. Shocking. Really? I actually really like green tea ice hmm. cream. Are you a chocolate fan? You know, I could go for a good vanilla, but chocolate, just like with the cookies as we described last time, great. So Baron Bait here from KT. They can pretty much take this whenever they want. They're trying to push up the mid lane. However, there is enough damage there to take out these super minions relatively quickly. A zero turret going to go up to help with that. Wave clear. KT just needs to start the Baron, though. Some days just, you know, flashbacks to last game. Unkillable now that he has the Thorn Mail. It's more magic damage this time, but can run at Fury, and honestly, Fury has to run the other way and be zoned himself. All right, and oh. wow, going down immediately. A score is caught on the outside of the pit. Can KT win this 4v5? They have control of the choke with the Chaos Storm, and that is an easy double kill for Nagne. So here come the rest of the point kills. Crown, got to take it to a triple. Fury, the last man alive. Flash forward. Doesn't get in Q range. It doesn't get that big burst of moon, so he can get it from the minion, though. And now coming through. More minions. TP is here. Someday has the home guard, but that's not going to matter. Ace for Nogne as he finishes it off. And now KT Rollster just looking at the win here. 20 to 5 in kills in the end. Maybe they get one person back up or two with Eve by the time this goes down, but that is not going to be anywhere near enough damage to convince KT to leave the Nexus alone. And that'll be it. A 2 0. For KT Rolster, that'll put him in third place in this league with a win over Samsung. 10 1 and 4 first game, 5 0 oh, and 9 is Victor in game two. Nane has a good series, may not even win any MVPs, but KT in general, so together. We talked about it. Sunday Nane on the same wavelength, scoring Pickaboo for a few weeks now. In fact, ever since Pickaboo came into this lineup, on the same lineup. And Arrow, look, he's doing Arrow things on the likes of Sim. Yeah, that's, that's the question, though, is how deep does this team go? Because when they get what they're good at, they are excellent, but you put them on something like Corky or another meta pick, and they can't really deliver in the same way. Sure, they won that game one, and Arrow looked better, but Samsung, 